Happy Pride Month, my beautiful humans. Welcome back to another gay video. I know that dating can be terrifying, but also being gay <laughs> adds another terrifying element to the mix. So I'm gonna talk about all of my dating advice, dating tips, what to expect on a first date, etc. in this video. By the way, this video is part of a series called For the Gays, which is a mini series I do in Pride Month. If you wanna see more gay videos, make sure you subscribe. A really important thing you need to do at the start when you're talking to someone is set your intentions. It is completely okay to ask, hey, what are you looking for in a relationship? Whether they were friends with you before or you're talking to someone on Tinder, you should mention if you're looking for like a long-term relationship or you're looking just to have some fun, if you know what I mean. Setting the intentions requires you to also know what you want. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to go on dates? Are you ready for a long-term relationship? Or is it okay if you just test the waters for now? Having that communication and being super clear means no one's gonna get upset if things don't match up, like if someone just wants to be casual or you want a long-term relationship it's good to have that done right at the start i did make a video on how to tell if a girl likes you if you're not up to that stage go and check that one out i know everyone here is probably not straight so it's a little bit confusing when you go on a date like who pays the bill who asks who out who plans there's no straight answer depending on who you go out with people maybe do different things because there is no set stereotype for us you can also say let's split the bill if you want to as well i don't think anyone will take offense to that it's obviously nicer if someone just is like hey i'll pay for it this one is really important um and i don't want you to underestimate this one <laughs> make your date around a place where you can talk going to the movies as a first date is not a very good idea because there's no chance for you to like have a conversation. You're just two strangers almost sitting in a movie theater. It's, it's just not the best way. Go out and have lunch somewhere where you can sit at a table and talk to this person and find out about their life. Go to a bar or plan to go somewhere afterwards. I went to a bar once for some like after work drinks and then we went out to dinner afterwards. So we kind of got relaxed in the bar and the bar was a bit noisier and then we could continue the conversation elsewhere at dinner. Also, when I say go somewhere where you can talk, I also mean because we are gay and because not everywhere is accepting, go somewhere where you feel comfortable being with another person of the same sex or gender or whatever. You might be worried about everyone listening in or you might not feel safe. Try and plan that beforehand. I think on Google, some of the restaurant listings have a little thing that says LGBT friendly. So if you can find somewhere that has that, then that's great. Or like they put a flag in the restaurant window. That's a good thing too. This should be a no brainer, but unfortunately some people don't realize that this one is so important, but consent is sexy. You're gonna make a first move on someone or you know, have some fun times. Ask them, can I kiss you? Would it be okay if I do this? Is it okay if I put my arm around you? When Girl Pal was at my house for the first time, we were both sitting on my bed and she asked me, hey, can I kiss you? That was good because she didn't go to kiss me. She just asked first and I was a nervous wreck and I'm so glad she asked because I wasn't ready. If she had lent in to do that, I would have freaked out. I ended up saying, no, not yet, I'm not ready. And then I went and did it later when I was ready. You should absolutely never feel pressured into doing something you don't want to do. Anything but a yes is a no. So if someone is silent, that is a no. If someone is like, oh, I don't know, maybe, that is a no. A really easy dating tip to get someone to like really like you back and show that you're interested is compliments. Maybe her shirt caught your attention. <laughs> you should give her a compliment on it. If you guys want 10% off my merch, I will put a special little coupon in the description for you guys. This will run out at the end of Pride, so make sure you go and check that out if you want one. Anyway, let's continue. Using the person's name is like the sexiest thing. If someone uses your name when you're on a date, it shows that they remembered your name and they're really into you. I love that. Don't talk about your ex. Just don't do it. It shows that you're not ready, or if this person talks about their ex, they're not ready either. It shows that your brain is somewhere else. You're not thinking about being here in the now with whoever the other person is on the date. I actually did go on a date where all this person talked about for a little bit, and even in our text was her ex. I knew that I wasn't ready. I knew she wasn't ready either, but it was okay because we both kind of bonded on being freshly out of a breakup. That was nice because we kind of had more of a like friend chat rather than like a really romantic kind of thing, you know? It was just two girls being pals, quite literally. I think this goes for any kind of dating ever, not just being LGBT, but sometimes there are awkward spots, like awkward gaps in the conversation. You do something awkward, maybe you both lean in for a kiss and you headbutt or something. Like there will be awkward moments. It's good just to laugh 
when that happens. You don't need to take it so seriously. If there is a gap in the conversation, you can circle back to something they talked about earlier. Maybe they were talking about their family or their dog and ask them, hey, you were talking about your dog Max. What breed is he? Circling back is a cute little technique because you don't know a lot about this person's life yet, I'm assuming, <laughs> if you like met them on Tinder. Like, so you go off things they've already mentioned, get them to expand on things you already know about them. Also have some topics in your head. Like if you're going on a first date, prepare with some ideas or things that you might ask this person. Maybe you've already been talking on Tinder and you have an idea like what they're interested in, etc. But like have some topics on mind that you want to talk about. Another one that I think is a given for gays is the coming out story. It might not be appropriate for the first date. It might be, you know, a couple of dates in, depending on how things go. You have to remember that sometimes for people, it is traumatic or it is hard. If you don't know the person really well, don't jump in with really hard topics or personal questions. Maybe leave that to a few dates later. Find similarities, find things that you have common ground. Maybe it's Netflix shows, maybe it's movies, maybe you both love fun socks. I don't know. Keep things fun and light by talking about things you both love. If you've been on a few dates and you kind of want to take this thing further, I think it's really important that you get your friend's opinions on this person. I definitely did this with Girl Pal. <laughs> Without her knowing, I made her meet my sister very, very early on and my mum and dad, I think, very early on and also my friends as well, just so I could get their opinions, what they thought about her, whether, you know, we would be a good fit or that like any red flags came from them. And by really early on, I mean within the first five dates because the first five dates is psychologically when you fall in love. So once you fall in love, you are then blinded by the love hormones and everything going in your brain. So it's really important to get the opinions of people around you who love you, who know you within those first five dates before you are blind. <laughs> And lastly, know when to let go. It's okay to stop talking to someone on Tinder or just, you know, move on and not date someone anymore. Sometimes you know in your gut, you're like, hmm, this person isn't my forever person. Let go and move on. Not saying ghost them. I have done that. It isn't the best thing, but sometimes people just do that and know like if someone ghosts you, you're just not their person and that's okay. Please, please, please don't settle because you're afraid of being alone. If I like really push for the first person I went on a date with after my breakup, I don't think I, I obviously wouldn't be happy because she just wasn't for me. And same with the next person, just was not for me or anyone else I talked to on Tinder that just weren't my person and that's okay. I definitely wasn't ready at that time and I had more growing to do and I'm very glad that I waited and I didn't push myself to keep going. I promise that your person is out there. And if you think that person is someone you know, I made a video on how to tell if a girl likes you. <laughs> Go and check out this video if you have not seen it yet. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you next week in another For The Gays video. Bye! Now get out there and go and get her! <laughs>